Welcome to my YouTube channel, Words of Inspiration. This video will explore understanding Allah's knowledge, human free will, and predestination in Islam. The relationship between Allah's knowledge, ilm, human free will, iktiyar, and predestination, qadar, is one of the most intricate theological topics in Islam. These concepts intertwine in ways that emphasize both divine omniscience and human accountability. In exploring this topic, it is essential to look at the Quran, Hadith, and the scholarly interpretations of Islamic thinkers who have sought to reconcile these seemingly paradoxical ideas. Allah's knowledge is considered absolute and all-encompassing. This belief in Allah's omniscience is a core tenet, as highlighted in the Quran, Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, verse 59 states, وَإِنَّهُ مَفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُو وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَاتٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّتٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَبِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And with him are the keys of the unseen. None knows them except him. And he knows what is on the land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but that he knows it. And no grain is there within the darkness of the earth. And no moist or dry thing, but that it is written in a clear record. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also highlighted the extent of Allah's knowledge in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, Allah wrote down the decrees of creation 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth. Despite Allah's infinite knowledge, humans are granted the freedom to choose between right and wrong. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18, verse 29, states, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَقْفُرُ إِنَّا أَرْتَدْنَا لِلزَّالِمِينَ نَارَ نَحَاتَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيسُ يُغَاسُ بِمَا إِنْ كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِ and say, the truth is from your Lord. So whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Islamic scholars emphasize that human beings, though constrained by divine will, have the capacity to make their own choices within this framework. Predestination, or qadar, refers to Allah's divine decree over all events. The Quran is clear that everything occurs by the will of Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Qamar, chapter 54, verse 49, states, Inna Indeed, all things we created with predestination. However, misunderstandings arise when people mistakenly attribute human actions, including moral wrongs, to Allah's predestination as a way to evade responsibility. Islam clearly distinguishes between Allah's foreknowledge and human free will. Allah, being beyond time, knows everything that will happen, but this knowledge does not compel humans to act. Allah has granted free will to both humans and jinn, enabling them to make choices between right and wrong. As Allah states in the Quran, Surah Al-Insan, chapter 76, verse 3 states, Indeed, we guided him to the way, be he grateful or be he ungrateful. This verse affirms that humans have the capacity to choose between different paths, making them responsible for their own actions. Using Qadar to justify criminal actions, such as a rapist arguing that their crime was part of the victim's destiny is a misapplication of Islamic teaching. Islam holds individuals accountable for their actions as humans are not forced into wrongdoing but are warned against it through divine guidance in the Quran and the Hadith. For example, in the Quran, Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 33 states, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاهِ شَمَا زَهَارَ مِنْهَا 
وما بتانا والاسم والبغي بغير الحق وان تشركوا بالله ما لم ينزل به سلطانا وان تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون say my lord has only forbidden immoralities what is apparent of them and what is concealed and sin and oppression without right and that you associate with allah that for which he has not sent down authority and that you say about allah that which you do not know this verse condemns immorality oppression and sin directly challenging the notion that individuals can avoid accountability for such actions by blaming qada the prophet muhammad peace be upon him further clarified in the hadith that each person is responsible for their deeds a well known hadith states actions are but by intentions and every man shall have only that which he intended this illustrates that while allah knows all outcomes humans are responsible for their intentions and actions some aspects of human life such as life span and death are fixed by allah and fall under qadar for instance in the quran surah al imran chapter 3 verse 145 explains wa ma kana li nafsin an tamuta illa bi iznillah kitaban muajjala wa ma yurid sawab ad dunya nutihi minha wa ma yurid sawab al akhirati nutihi minha wa sanajish shakirin and no soul can ever die except by allah's leave and at a predetermined time these are parts of destiny that humans cannot control or alter however actions such as small choices goody including whether to commit a crime like rape are within human control and thus individuals are judged based on their decisions it is important to note that allah's qadar does not negate justice if someone commits a crime such as rape it is their choice not something allah forced upon them they are responsible for their evil deeds and will be judged accordingly both in this life and the hereafter in the quran surah al zalzala chapter 99 verses 7 to 8 allah states famay ya'mal mithqala zaratin khayra yara wa may ya'mal mithqala zaratin sharra yara so whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it and whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it this verse emphasizes that every person's actions whether good or bad will be accounted for this verse reinforces the notion that even the smallest of actions whether good or bad will be judged by allah reflecting the responsibility that free will carries ibn taymiyah a prominent islamic scholar explained this balance between free will and qadar man has choice and free will in terms of the deeds that he does and he has understanding and will but all of that exists by the will of allah and his decree in this view while everything occurs by allah's will humans have the freedom to choose and are therefore accountable for their actions in islam qadar represents allah's perfect knowledge and will yet it does not imply that humans are forced into committing good or bad deeds humans are endowed with free will and it is through this gift that they will be judged in the afterlife as such using qadar to justify immoral actions such as rape is a misunderstanding of the concept every person is responsible for their actions and must face the consequences of their choices both in this world and in the hereafter the quran speaks unequivocally about allah's absolute and comprehensive knowledge as allah states in the quran surah al-anbiya chapter 21 verse 28 states ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yashfa'una illa liman irtada wa hum min kashyatihi mushfikun he knows what is presently before them and what will be after them and they cannot intercede except on behalf of one 
whom he approves. And they, from fear of him, are apprehensive. This verse emphasizes the limitless nature of Allah's awareness, encompassing not only the physical world, but also the innermost thoughts and intentions of his creation. Another verse in the Quran, Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, verse 59 states, وَإِنَّهُ مَفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّهُ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَارِ وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا هَبَةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَبِيسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَبٍ مُبِينٍ And with him are the keys of the unseen. None knows them except him. And he knows what is on the land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but that he knows it. And no grain is there within the darknesses of the earth, and no moist or dry thing, but that it is written in a clear record. And he knows what is on the land and in the sea. As Allah states in the Quran, Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, verse 59 states, وَإِنَّهُ مَفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوْ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَهْرِ وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And with him are the keys of the unseen. None knows them except him. And he knows what is on the land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls but that he knows it. And no grain is there within the darknesses of the earth, and no moist or dry thing, but that it is written in a clear record. This beautifully illustrates the all-encompassing scope of Allah's knowledge, extending even to the seemingly insignificant details of the universe. The hadith further reinforces this understanding. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Allah wrote down the decrees of creation 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth. Sahih Muslim. This emphasizes that Allah's knowledge is not limited by time or space. It predates and encompasses all of existence. The gift of free will Islam teaches that Allah has granted humans the ability to make choices, which differentiates them from other creatures, such as angels and animals. This ability to choose is seen as a test for mankind, determining their outcomes in the hereafter. According to the Quran, Allah has provided guidance through his revelations, leaving it to humans to choose the path of righteousness or disobedience. As Allah states in the Quran, Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18, verse 29, states, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنُوا وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرُ إِنَّا أَتَدْنَا لِلْزَّالِمِينَ نَارًا أَهَاتَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيسُ يُغَسُوا بِمَاءٍ كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِ الْوُجُهُ بِسَ الشَّرَبِ وَسَّاتْ مُرْتَفَكَ and say, the truth is from your Lord. So whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Indeed, we have prepared for the wrongdoers a fire whose walls will surround them. And if they call for relief, they will be relieved with water like murky oil, which scalds their faces. Wretched is the drink and evil is the resting place. This verse emphasizes that belief and disbelief are matters of personal choice and individuals will be held accountable for the choices they make. Furthermore, Allah's mercy is extended to those who strive for righteousness, while warnings are given to those who choose the path of evil. The responsibility that comes with this free will makes humans morally accountable for their actions. Responsibility and accountability. In Islam, free will is tied directly to moral responsibility. Human beings are not forced into good or bad actions, but are 
given guidance through the Quran and Hadith, leaving them responsible for choosing their course of action. As Allah states in the Quran Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 256 states, La ikraha fid dini qad tabiyanar rushdu min al ghai fa may yakfur bit taghuti wa yu'min billahi faqad istamsaka bil urwati al wusqa la anfisama laha wallahu sami'un alim there shall be no compulsion in acceptance of the religion the right course has become clear from the wrong so whoever disbelieves in taghut and believes in allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold with no break in it. And Allah is hearing and knowing, indicating that humans cannot be coerced into belief or disbelief. Their actions are based on their choices. The responsibility that comes with free will is reflected in the concept of divine justice, Adl, where humans will be held accountable for their deeds on the day of judgment. Allah's justice ensures that no one is wronged and people are rewarded or punished based on the moral decisions they made during their lives. Here are 10 examples from the Quran, Hadith and statements from Muslim scholars to illustrate what is part of Qadar, predestined and what is not. From the Quran, 1. Life and death, part of Qadar. Allahu ladhi khalaqakum summa razaqakum summa yumitukum summa yuhikum hal min shurakaikum may yaf'alu min zalikum min sha'i subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun It is Allah who created you and then provided for you then will cause you to die and then will give you life again Quran 3040 Explanation Life and death are predestined by Allah. No one can choose when they are born or when they will die. 2. Provision and wealth, part of Qadar. Inal laha huar razzaku zulkuwatil matin. Indeed, Allah is the continual provider, the firm possessor of strength. Quran 51.58 Explanation While human effort is encouraged, the amount of provision and wealth a person receives is ultimately decreed by Allah. 3. Guidance and misguidance. Part of Qadar. Inna kala tahdi man ahbabta, wa lakin Allah yahdi man yasha, wa huwa alamu bil muhtadin. Indeed, you do not guide whom you like, but Allah guides whom He wills. Quran 28.56. Explanation Allah is the one who guides or leaves a person in misguidance. Humans can seek guidance, but it is ultimately Allah's decision. 4. Calamities, part of Qadar. Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi iznillah. Wa mani yumim billahi yahdi kalba. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. No disaster strikes except by permission of Allah. Quran 64.11 Explanation. Natural disasters and calamities are part of Allah's decree. People cannot control when or where they occur. From Hadith 5, the writing of destiny, part of Qadar. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The first thing Allah cre created was the pen. He said to it, Write. It said, What shall I write? He said, Write what will happen until the day of resurrection. Sunan Abi Dawud 4700. Explanation. Everything that happens in the universe was written down before creation. And this is part of Allah's divine decree. 6. Free will in personal actions, not part of Qadar. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Actions are but by intentions, and every person will have only what they intended. Sahih al-Bukhari 1. Explanation. While certain events are predestined, individuals have free will to choose their actions and they are judged based on their intentions and deeds. 7. Effort in seeking knowledge, not part of Qadar. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Whoever follows a path in pursuit of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him a path to paradise. Sahih Muslim 2699. 
explanation. Seeking knowledge and education are choices humans make, and they are not predestined. The effort to learn and grow is based on individual will. 8. The power of dua, supplication, not part of Qadar. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Nothing can change the divine decree except dua. Sunan al-Tirmidhi 2139 Explanation Dua supplication has the power to alter certain aspects of Qadr, particularly when it comes to personal well-being or avoiding calamities. From Muslim scholars 9. Repentance and forgiveness Not part of Qadr Imam al-Ghazali The servant's repentance is from his free will and it is beloved to Allah. Allah does not force repentance upon anyone, but he opened the door to it. Explanation Repentance tawbah is a conscious act of free will and is not part of qadar. Humans can choose to repent for their sins or continue in wrongdoing. 10. Choice in doing good deeds, not part of qadar. Ibn Taymiyyah Allah commands good deeds but does not force anyone to perform them. He gives guidance and the person can choose to accept or reject it. Explanation Performing good deeds such as charity, prayer and fasting are choices individuals make. While Allah rewards these deeds, He does not compel anyone to do them. Do not forget to tap on the like, subscribe and share buttons and also leave a comment.